All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering the Argent Tournament and Fall of the Lich King from Chronicle Volume 3. So let's go! Despite all of the recent distractions, the war against the Lich King was going pretty well. The Alliance and Horde had succeeded in taking the Scourge's territory piece by piece, crushing numerous undead outposts throughout Northrend. It was now time to finally assault Icecrown Citadel. Both Varian Rin and Garrosh Hellscream were eager to get started, but Tyrion Fordring had sent word to both of them, saying chill your beans and hold back. This is because Tyrion had a suspicion that a full-scale assault was exactly what the Lich King wanted. The Argent Crusade and Knights of the Ebon Blade had carved out their own footholds near Icecrown Citadel, and had spent a few weeks observing the Scourge's movements and tactics. Both groups had a little brain trust meeting with each other and reached the same conclusion. The Lich King was happy to suffer heavy losses, because it didn't matter. The Scourge would inflict heavy losses in return, and every single one of the living that died in battle would rise again as an undead minion. Just like that really popular TV show that everyone watches, that I also watch because I'm cool and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Tyrion decided there was only one way to conquer Icecrown. A small surgical strike force that could sneak in, take out the Citadel's defences, and fight its way to the Lich King without causing too much of a ruckus. Only the most worthy of champions deserve to be part of this strike force. And what better way to prove your worth than a tournament with jousting and stuff? And that's how the Argent Tournament was born. Despite the tensions between the factions, everybody trusted Tyrion. He'd shown exemplary bravery in his fight to defend Light's Hope Chapel. And the Horde liked him because of his commitment to justice and honour. He was Eitrig's brother from another mother, after the Paladin stood against his own people to defend the Orc's life many years earlier. So there was no shortage of volunteers willing to enter the tournament and prove they were good at stuff. And I'm going to start doing dungeons and raids as a separate series of videos at some point, so for now, the tournament went ahead, people did some jousting, and everybody loved it. Tyrion now had his chosen few. These champions joined up with Tyrion, the Argent Crusade, Darien Mograine, and many of his Death Knights, and they all formed a new order called the Ashen Verdict. Because paladins bloody love forming new orders with new names. They do it at least twice a week. And after all that, they seemingly went ahead with a full-scale assault anyway, which doesn't make sense, but okay. Gunships from both the Alliance and Horde swooped down towards Icecrown Citadel and landed their forces at different locations. They cut deep into the stronghold until they reached a wing of the fortress called the Halls of Reflection. At this point, the Lich King appeared, because this instance is basically his bedroom, and because it's only a five-man instance, they all had to cheese it. But despite this defeat, Azeroth's defenders just redoubled their efforts and kept pushing. The Argent Crusade and Knights of the Ebon Blade forged a staging ground just inside Icecrown Citadel's entrance, and now the raid part starts. The battle that engulfed the Citadel tested the strength and willpower of everyone. They faced the Lich King's most powerful and dangerous minions as they made their way up the tower, and they decided this was a great time to have a gunship battle against each other for some strange reason. And after that, things got really emotional. Dranosh Sourfang's corpse had been recovered from the Wrathgate by the Scourge, and then transformed into a Death Knight. He was forced to fight against his former allies, and they were forced to bloody murder him. When Varrock Sourfang learned what had become of his son, he wasn't happy at all. Even members of the Alliance sympathised with him. Varian himself gave the order to stand down and let the grieving father pass to collect his son's body. And then he buggered off. After more fighting, they eventually arrived at the Frozen Throne itself. There, they came across another hero who disappeared at the Wrathgate. Bolvar Fordragon. He'd been completely disfigured by the Red Dragonflight's enchanted fire and kind of looked like Freddy Krueger now. And he was suspended by chains above the Frozen Throne. Like Dranosh, the Lich King had attempted to convert the Paladin to a minion of the Scourge, but Bolvar had proven a little bit more difficult to corrupt than the Orc had been, so the Lich King just tortured him instead, out of sheer frustration. The champions were exhausted, battered, pretty broken. They knew they wouldn't be able to free Bolvar until the Lich King was taken care of, and the Lich King was feeling very pleased with himself because his true prize now stood before him, the greatest heroes of Azeroth. If he wins, they'd be raised into undeath and wielded as his greatest weapon. So he unleashed his full fury. Several heroes' souls were ripped from their bodies with Frostmourne, but that didn't stop them. Those that were trapped inside the Cursed Blade carried on fighting anyway. But despite their best efforts, the Lich King overwhelmed them all. Tyrion was trapped in a block of ice, and his followers were slaughtered. The Lich King had bloody one mates. This was the end. But it wasn't. Tyrion refused to give up. Somehow he broke free from his icy prison, used all of his might, and smashed Frostmourne to pieces with the Ashbringer. The spirits of the Lich King's victims that had been trapped within the blade were released, and suddenly he was surrounded by a lot of very angry ghosts that were like, F**k you! The spirit of Arthas Menethil's own father, King Terranas, was there as well. He raised the slain champions back to life, and now the tables were turned. The Lich King was defenceless and gravely wounded, 
so he didn't last very long. In his final moments, the Frozen Throne's corruption faded from Arthas's mind, and he was suddenly faced with a buttload of guilt for all of his crimes. So he cried, and then he died. The only thing left to do now was deal with the remnants of the Scourge. But Terranas gave Tyrion some very troubling information. Without a powerful consciousness controlling the Scourge, they'd just be mental and run amok, destroying everything. There must always be a Lich King. So Tyrion, being the nice bloke that he is, decided it should be him to make this sacrifice. He steeled himself, picked up the Lich King's helm, and said his goodbyes. But before he could put it on, Bolvar piped up. Look at me. I'm broken. Beaten. Scarred. There's no going back for me. I look like a raisin. So let me wear the Lich King's helm and keep the Scourge in check. And Tyrion was like, yeah, all right then. And we're leaving it there. In the next Volume 3 video, Bolvar finds out being the Lich King is harder than it looks. And Sylvanas isn't happy at all that she didn't personally get to take revenge on Arse, uh, Arse, Arse Face. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!